To cut down on potential dinghy theft, we use a simple bicycle lock and we pass it through a pad eye and we then lock it to a cleat or to a piling or something. We can prevent them from stealing the dinghy, but we also have some really nice oars that Maddie got me. So I worry when we get somewhere and we lock up the dinghy and we leave the oars in, I worry that the oars might end up walking away. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to drill a hole through the ends of the oars, which is really sad because they're gorgeous oars. So I'm gonna drill through the end of the oar, we'll make a little hole, and then we can pass the cable lock through the oars as well as through the pad eye on the dinghy. So in that situation, the dinghy, its oars, and we also hook the life jacket vests through them as well, are all locked up. So if someone walks by and tries to do a little snatch and grab, it doesn't come off that quickly. Now we have the oar lock hole, and we can slip the lock right through it. Now I'm not just gonna leave it like this because if we left the oar as bare wood like that, one, the finish would just start peeling off because of the moisture contamination, and two, moisture is gonna get in here and it's gonna rot the wood out. So after this, I'm gonna sand these edges, radius the corner, and uh, I'm gonna varnish the inside. That way, everything stays nice and protected. Herbie is varnishing. Yeah. Good old spar varnish. Spar varnish. Sparnish. He's taking this opportunity that we have here to transform the rub rails. As you can see, they have gotten pretty beaten up and uh, in need of varnish. Yeah. It's amazing what one coat of varnish does. It goes from like that braid look. Shiny brown. Yep. Bye! So, we're gonna head to dinner. There's this uh, restaurant right by the water here. So we're gonna check it out and uh, get some food there. We're gonna go to a restaurant that we saw yesterday just because we gotta we're kind of itching to get out of the boat today. It's been a very lazy afternoon. I finished my book so that was good and Herbie's been working and yeah, it's been a good day. Now we're gonna top it off with some good dinner. I usually step on the rub rails but Herbie varnished them. But I found that I can step here without it sinking. Shall we? Yes, indeed. So, we got ourselves some dinner. I'm having a burger patty with no bun. <laughs> Just finished my salad. Maddie's gonna have a fried oyster sandwich. Fried oyster po' boy. Looks amazing. Eight oysters in there. We ended up going to a different place than we expected to because it was closer and cheaper. And actually, it looks to be really delicious and worth it. So, it's always the little gems that you find that are worth stopping for. And they're the ones worth mentioning. So, we're glad we stopped here for sure. <laughs> Morty. Hey, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Selena Gomez. Oh, she wrote a song for Ringo Star. Oh. It's time to say goodbye to Solomon's. Uh, it's been good here. Really not a whole lot to do on this little peninsula, but except for eat. <laughs> and spend money. But um, Herbie's getting the anchor up now and I'm waiting to kind of crank the motor and get us out of here while he gets the sails up and everything. It's a small 
creek or river that we are in right now, Back Creek. And yeah, it's been fun rafting up with Herbie's parents. That was well worth it. Herbie just got the anchor up and I am getting us out of here. of large spending and not much to do. sailor that's going by us. Ooh. Oh, now he has one reef in. When he was putting his sails up, he was full sail for a bit there. And you're leaning over quite a bit. And you figure people are doing different things. If you're out for fun, it's really fun to you know put out too much sail and heel over really far and you know, have a rail in the water. But if it's your home, we keep it, you know, not heeled over that far. So right now we're only heeled over five degrees. It seems that we just had a little lull as we were coming down the river because now that we're out in the bay, our speed's back up. We're doing five knots again. And we're about to start heading south once we clear this shoal. And we'll just make our way straight down the bay the way it looks. Maybe even on a beam reach to close reach. So hopefully a little tacking and a straight shot down the St. Mary's River. that means that we're also doing less than two knots. So sitting in all this slop, we're kind of sloshing around a lot. And it's taking a toll on me. So she's kind of just keeping her head down, trying to feel better. And then when she's doing a little better, we'll uh, get some more sail out. Yes, excuse me, sir. Oh, where are we going? Feeling a little better. That was rough. But I ate some banana bread, and hopefully that'll help. I tend to, I was working on a video on the iPad and I got a little seasick. Got kind of a lot seasick, but it's better now that we're moving forward at at least 3.5 knots. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be okay. I'm still a little under the weather.
Yes, you see, it's just that we seem to be going a bit fast, and I did not intend for this when I first landed on this rope, and, um, uh, can, can I please get off? He's trying to get a close-up shot of that cicada, and as the camera got really close, he flew off. Hope he makes it to land, because we're kind of in the very middle of the bay, several miles from any shore. Self-steering wind vane, which uses no electricity, and it's powered solely by the speed of the boat through the water and the wind we're sailing in. At first glance, the monitor looks like a big, giant, shiny contraption, but there's actually a couple intricate parts, and they make the whole thing work effortlessly. The first part, and the most important part, is the wind vane itself. So you can see it flops left and right here. As it does that, it then turns a pinion gear. The pinion gear here, is moved up and down by the monitor's wind vane, which rotates left and right. So as it moves, it then turns this little gear down there. So if I move it, you'll see how that gear turns. When that gear turns, the blade in the water turns as well. So if I turn it all the way to one side or the other, it then turns as it moves to the water. So if we just watch it, you'll see that this blade swings from side to side through the water. When it moves from side to side, it pulls on those little white ropes that are tied to it. Now those little white ropes run all the way back to the helm and attach to the wheel. And that causes the wheel to turn when this guy moves. So to recap, you have the wind vane up here, you have the air blade, and as it moves from side to side, it then causes that little gear to move. And when that gear moves, it causes the paddle in the water to change its angle, and that causes it to scoot left and right depending on which way it goes. When the paddle moves, it then pulls on the rope, which is attached to the wheel. Up at the wheel, those ropes run through a series of pulleys to get here, and they just come in from the side, and one attaches on the top, and one goes to the bottom. So when the paddle goes over one way, it pulls on this, and it pulls the boat to starboard. If it goes the other way, it'll pull the boat to port by yanking on the bottom one. That's how it works. So, when you get everything set up, what you need to do is first you need to balance the helm. So you need the sails to be set so that there's pretty much no pull in either direction. And this is set to be our rudder indicator. So this is straight up when the rudder is straight. So right now we're fighting a little bit of weather helm right now. So, you set the sails so they're balanced, and then you engage this guy. That's it. And to set your heading, you simply turn the air vane so it points straight into the wind. So now it's flopped over to the side. So it's trying to make us turn to go uh, more upwind. When it points straight up and down, it means it's directly on course and it's steering us straight. I hope that answered your question about our monitor wind vane. We call her Wendy as she steers us along effortlessly and with no electricity. If you have any other questions about gear on the boat or things that we have that make us go, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, we have a very fun, fast sail on our way down to St. Mary's River, but the nighttime has something else in store for us. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation, that way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much!